Australia has been slow off the mark in terms of developing a national action plan for business and human rights. Um, it's tentatively begun the process for implementing a national action plan. Um, how long do you think it will be until we see it completed? Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I think we'll probably see um, some formal co uh, conversations and consultations take place before the end of this year. I'd be surprised if we had any operational national action plan before the end of next year. Great, so not any time very soon. Not any time very soon, but the process of consultation itself, if it involves a, a, you know, a range of different stakeholders, can actually lead to good human rights outcomes in itself. So I'm, I'm pretty hopeful about the conversations and that we'll eventually get some sort of plan, but I think it'll take some time. Great. And recently, protesters were arrested for blocking the entry to a Wilson Security car park in Melbourne. Wilson Security's parent company also runs the detention centres on Nauru and Manus Island. Do you think this kind of action is effective and or necessary? So I think we need in corporate accountability work a real diversity of tactics and one of those tactics is direct action um, such as blockading. Uh, I've spoken to uh, that group of activists about their action this week which I think was a very effective action um, in interrupting business as usual and the reason that you, you interrupt business as usual is to create space for um, negotiations to occur um, and to put pressure on companies and say hey this just isn't on. Absolutely. And so looking more at Australia domestically, what do you see as some of the big issues for business and human rights in Australia, other than obviously Nauru and Manus Island? Yeah, so I think um, the supply chains and exploitation in supply chains of Australian companies, particularly working overseas, uh, will uh, continue to be a focus. It's certainly a focus for government and civil society and I think business is still working out how to actually go through their supply chains and identify human rights impacts. I think um, the struggle for uh, justice for Indigenous peoples um, uh, must continue to be a focus for corporate accountability campaigners. Uh, there is still so much work um, to be done in addressing injustices that are decades old. Um, I think we will start to see a convergence of environmental activism and human rights activism, um, looking at you know the right to a, a healthy and clean environment um, and a livable environment as a human right. Um, and I think we will probably start to see some movement on corporate tax avoidance as business as a business and human rights issue. Mm. And what do you, are there countries that Australia should be looking to as examples of good leadership in the area of business and human rights? Yeah, so a lot of the European um, countries have, have um, done some interesting things. Uh, Germany has just completed a, a, a massive study of the business and human rights situation in Germany called a National Baseline Assessment. I think that would be a good move for Australia. Uh, but in our region, Indonesia will actually be this year, I think, the first country to release a national action plan. I think Australia um, needs to be mindful of the impacts that it's corporations have overseas, so we should really be looking around our region to see what's happening and how we can most effectively ensure that Australian businesses aren't abusing and exploiting people. Bruno O'Brien, thank you for your time. Thanks very much.